Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Nidha Rastagi. I am assistant professor at Dow College of Biotechnology, Dow University of Health Sciences. Today I will be going to discuss the antigens and antibody. We will discuss the basic concepts of antigen and antibody. These are the contents which will be discussed throughout the lecture. We will first of all discuss the basic concepts of antigens and immunogen. Then what are hectanes and the factor which influence the immunogenicity of an immunogen. Then we will be discussing the epitopes and super antigens. We will also discuss about the basic structure and functions of antibody and their types in addition with the immune response against any antigen. At the end of the lecture, students will be able to understand the basic concepts of antigen and immunogens. They will also elaborate the factors affecting immunogenicity of an immunogen. They will also be able to explain the differences in an antigen and superantigen. They will also demonstrate the basic structure of an antibody with its types. In the end, they will be able to enlighten the response of antibody production on exposure with an antigen. So what are antigens? Antigens are basically small molecule which are foreign to the body and they can bind to antibody or T cell receptor. They have tendency to bind with the antibody and T cell receptor. And this ability of binding with these effective molecule, it is called antigenicity. Now, on the other hand, if these antigens, they could be able to elicit the strong immune response means the immune response against these antigen, they will be called immunogen. So antigens, they are basically the small molecule which only bind to the antibody and effector molecule of the humoral immune response as well as T cell receptor. While immunogens, they have tendency to elicit a strong immune response against their, these immunogens. So the ability of immunogens to elicit this immune response is called immunogenicity. So all antigens, they are not immunogen, but all immunogens, they are antigen. Now, there is a question that all immunogens, they are antigen, but all antigens are not immunogen. So in this statement, it is correct or not? Obviously, as we have discussed that all antigens, they are, immune, they are not immunogen, but immunogens, they are antigen which have tendency to elicit immune response against their binding. Now, what are haptanes? Now, you know that what are antigens and immunogens? So, the antigens which have only they can bind to the antibody or T cell receptor, but they, they have not tendency to elicit good immune response. They need help of another carrier molecule, which is mainly protein. So haptans, they are the antigen. They are not immunogen, but if they will combine with the carrier molecule in order to enhance the immunogenicity then after binding with this carrier molecule these heptanes they will become an immunogen and now they can cause and they can elicit a good immune response so now we will discuss about the factors of the which involve in immunogenicity of a substance. The first category of these factors, they will be based on the nature of immunogen. 
the nature of immunogen should be foreign the immunogen should be foreign it should be non self for the biological system the molecular size of the immunogen it matters means the higher molecular weight and immunogen they will elicit a good immune response as compared to the low molecular weight immunogens but some exceptions are there and some small molecules less than 1000 kda they can also elicit immune response the chemical composition it also a main factor which cause immunogenicity means the chemical composition should be complex complex the immunogen more good will be the immunogenicity the complex usually the complexity is due to heterogeneity of the molecule the physical form it also matters antigens are basically found in two forms either particulate antigens or soluble antigens the particulate antigens they are larger molecules and they can cause a good immune response while the soluble antigen they cause a weak immune response they are soluble small in size the degradability of antigen is necessary why because in immune response the antigen it should be degradable why it should be degradable because in adaptive immune response which is highly specific immune response the antigen it should be degraded by the antigen presenting cells and then the small peptides they will be presented to the t cells and then t cells can recognize the peptide and elicit the immune response while if the antigen it should not be degradable what happens there is a very weak or weak immune response and either it, there will be no immune response against those antigen which are non degradable here it is showing the complexity the chemical complexity contributes to immunogenicity the copolymers which composed of different amino acids or sugars they are usually immunogenic as compared to the homopolymer because the they are less complex as compared to the heteropolymers so now we know that the size of the molecule the complexity of the molecule they usually uh, on these factors the immunogenicity depends okay uh, beside the nature of the immunogen the other factors they also contribute to the immunogenicity the these factors include the biological system in which the immunogen has to be administered the genotype of the recipient means the genotype how it matters because we know that the genetic constitution of an immunized animal influences the type of immune response and the genetic control of immune responsiveness is primarily confined to genes with mhc molecule major histocompatibility complex molecule and mhc genes they their products play a central role in adaptive immune response also the age it also play a major role in immune response because we know that the younger people and older people they have weak immune response so it is the immune response in adults it will be good as compared to the very younger or infants or and older people in addition to the biological system some other factors they also influence the immunogenicity of a substance they also include the method of administration of the immunogen and it includes the dosage dosage of the antigen or immunogen the route with which the antigen is to be administered and either the antigen is administered is with adjuvant or without adjuvant it also matters so the administration route it strongly influences the immune response 
as uh, for example the antigen which is administered intravenously is carried first to the spleen whereas antigen administered subcutaneously moves first to the local lymph node so definitely there would be a different kind of immune response will be generated now what are adjuvants adjuvants are the substances when mixed with an antigen and injected with it they enhance the immunogenicity of that antigen so in case of weak antigens we use adjuvants in order to enhance their immunogenicity and enhance their persistence at the site of in injection so adjuvants are often used to boost the immune response when antigen has low immunogenicity and also if antigen is available in no low amount so we can use adjuvant in order to enhance the immune response now what are and uh, now what are the basic mechanisms involved in adjuvants adjuvants are basically enhancing the persistence of antigen at the site of injection means in addition with the adjuvant the antigen it remains at the site of the injection for longer time so it is available for longer time in order to provide the antigen and for a longer long term immune response as well as it also provide co stimulatory signals enhanced co stimulatory signals the local inflammation is increased in case of adjuvants and also adjuvant cause the non specific proliferation of lymphocytes the common adjuvants which are used they include the alum which is the more commonly used in clinical trials the fruins adjuvants they are also being used but they are used in research purposes the alum when an antigen in case of alum when the antigen is mixed with alum the salt precipitates the antigen and when this this is injected at the site the alum precipitation results in the slower release of the antigen from the site of injection on the other hand the fruins incomplete adjuvant they do not contain the whole mycobacterium but they contain the aqueous solution mineral oil and emulsifying agents such as manide monolate which disperse the oil into small droplets surrounding the antigen and it also provide the longer persistence of the antigen and slow release of antigen as compared to this front incomplete antigen the front's complete and adjuvant containing heat killed mycobacterium as an additional ingredient and it provide more pronounced immune response but it is it may cause some toxicities now what are epitopes epitopes are basically the specific structures found on the surface of antigen they are also called antigenic determinants see in this picture this this blue is a this blue one is an antigen and the yellowish orange these all are the epitopes found on the antigen and these epitopes they are separately bind to a different antibodies because see in this picture these all epitopes they looks in different shapes and structure so they have their different specificities and according to their specificities they will bind to their specific antibodies now this was all about the antigen and epitopes and heptanes so and also we have covered the adjuvants now what are super antigens as the name indicated super antigens they are the components of the some microbes including viruses or bacteria these viruses and bacteria they produce some proteins or some by product during their pathogenic phase as their defense 
mechanism against our immune system and these microbial antigens when they release into the system they cause the non specific activation of t cells and it results in the polyclonal t cell activation how it progress see in this picture this picture is showing that how t cell in normal condition the left one it is showing that in normal condition the t cell it is it can recognize the peptide when the peptide is presented by the msc molecule along with the antigen presenting cell now in case of super antigen what happens the super antigen they have tendency to bind simultaneously with the msc molecule as well as the t cell receptor and they this binding results in the non specific activation of t cells it also results in the massive cytokine release and we can say cytokine storm here in case of super antigen no antigen processing is required which is normally required in the antigen presentation and in a normal mechanism of t cell activation it needs antigen processed by the antigen presenting cell through the msc molecule but in case of super antigen what is what is happening super antigen they do not require antigen processing these are some microbial products which have tendency to bind with the t cell and antigen presenting cell simultaneously beside these microbial antigens some antibodies like anti cd3 and anti cd28 these antibodies they have also worked just like super antigen and they can also activate immune response immune system in non specific way here is an example of a super antigen derived from the staphylococcus aureus species it is the enterotoxin of the step aureus which is causing the food poisoning now this was all about the antigen and super antigen now we will move toward the antibody what are antibody antibodies are basically protein in nature and they react specifically to the antigen they are circulatory globulin and called immunoglobulin antibodies are mainly synthesized by the b cells and we can say only synthesized by the b cell lineage there are two types of antibodies they can be either membrane bound or they can be secreted in the secretions here we can see the basic structure of antibody antibody molecule is made up of four polypeptides two are heavy chains and the two are light chains the terminal region of these four polypeptides they are highly variable and see in this picture these are called the variable domains see these four a vh vl and vh vn among these variable region region there are certain regions also found inside the domain which are also hyper variable and they are called hyper variable regions the region in between the hyper variable regions they are called framework regions beside these variable region the remaining antibody molecule is constant and here we can designate the domains like constant 1 2 and 3 here the two heavy chains they are linked by disulfide bonding and this is basically the hinge region of the antibody this hinge region is highly flexible because of proline amino acid and this constant region is mainly involved in binding with the receptor and the variable region it is mainly involved in the binding with the antigen this hinge region is also involved in the cleavage site for many proteases the constant region is also involved in complement binding and also in other biological functions here are types of antibodies antibodies there are basic five types of antibodies on the basis of heavy chain these types are designated means the iga 
in case of IgA, the heavy chain is alpha. IgA is dimeric protein and it is mainly involved in mucosal immunity. While the IgD, the heavy chain in case of IgD is delta and this is found on the surface of B cell to serve as a B cell receptor. The IgE mainly comprise of the epsilon heavy chain and it involves in the allergy and anaphylactic epithelial anaphylactic reactions. The IgG, it is made up of the gamma heavy chains and the major systemic immunity, it is conferred by the IgG and also it involves in memory response. IgM is a pentameric antibody molecule and it is made up of immunoglobulin with new heavy chain and it also major B cell receptor and involve in the agglutination reactions. Out of these all five, the most common antibody in the circulation is the IgG and it is the found in the highest concentration in the circulation. Now, what is the hinge region in the antibody? As we have seen in the structure of the antibody, hinge region. Hinge region is basically rich in the proline as well as cysteine. Proline, it provides the flexibility. So, the antibody molecule, it can bind, it can show flexibility toward the antigen. This hinge region is present in three kind of antibodies, IgG, IgA and IgD. While the cysteine residues, they provide the cross-linking means they involve in disulfide bonding in between the two heavy chains. In IgM and IgE, they lack the hinge region. In addition to the hinge region, these antibodies IgE and IgM, they have an additional constant domain. So these antibodies, they have four constant domain while the IgA, IgD and IgG, they have three constant domain in addition with the hinge region. Here another question arises, which amino acid provides the flexibility? So now we can see the immune response against the antigen. There are two basic phases of immune response, the primary immune response and secondary immune response. Upon first exposure to the antigen, the primary immune response start to generate. The primary immune response is mainly comprised of the initiated with the IgM response and later on IgG will produce late in the primary immune response. The lag phase of the primary immune response is bigger as compared to the secondary immune response. Upon second exposure to the same antigen, the what happens? There is a quickly elevation of the IgG response. In secondary response, the IgM concentration is lower. Why? The IgG concentration is higher. Why? Because in primary immune response, there is a memory generation. Here, B cells, they also form memory cells and on the second exposure to the same antigen, these memory cells, they will quickly convert it into the factor cells and they provide quick immune response. Now, what are the main functions of the antibody? Antibody is mainly involved in the various functions, including the neutralization of microbes and toxins. They also help in opsonization, which will result in the phagocytosis because they bind with the uh, all side of the antigen and antigen can be easily engulfed by the phagocytes. So they also involve in antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity. They also have some complement activation. Now when complements they will be activated, they also activate other pathways like lysis of microbes, phagocytosis enhancement, 
similarly like opsonization and also they increase the inflammation so we can say that antibodies they are the main effector molecule of the humoral immune response and they play a vital role in immune response we can summarize our lecture over here we have discussed about some basic concepts of antigen immunogen happens we have also discussed some basics of adjuvants and how adjuvant works what are super antigens it is also has been discussed now we can conclude our lecture in a way that antibodies are the main effector molecules of humoral immune response and there are five basic types of antibodies they perform different functions during the immune response thank you so much